DC Leather Carrier, why would Ethan talk to Sam about an issue he has with Hassan? Ethan said even said Sam wouldn't agree with Hassan's takes. Well, he doesn't well, he, know uh, Sam. Uh, and I bet also, well. he's not. He's coming at us, too. Like, uh, he's clearly got a bee in his bonnet, and he should talk to Sam about it. And also, Sam basically agreed with Hassan's uh, perspective without... Yeah, I mean, he didn't really dive into what he saw, but I've seen enough of Hassan to know that there's no real uh, degree of difference here. And the people accusing Hassan of being terror are fucking losers and should be ashamed of themselves. Agreed. Um, and I just... The reason I said that is because, you know, I, I, I think I explained it. Sam is a Jewish man, we are not uh, Matt and I, or whatever. I, Hassan and I, I guess, in terms of who he's been upset with, are, I mean, Ethan are not. can very easily say we're anti Semitic. Yeah. And uh, he can't have that with Sam. There are so many anti Zionist Jews. I mean, like, I, it's so amazing. Like, people I grew up with coming out of the woodwork to be like, you know, like I'm more. I'm. Uh, it was like the, the someone I knew from down the street who's organize. Who's a, a Jewish uh, girl that I used to walk to school with, organizing anti-Zionist, uh, pro-Palestine protests uh, in in the city, and other people I know across the country doing that as well. Like there are especially young people, plenty of anti-Zionist Jews. They get zero representation in the media. If we had polling firms that were interested in understanding this. I think we could get a pretty good sense about how many young people are on board with this because they're the only despite the shit that they get anytime yeah. they try to venture in that direction by these type of people i mean jewish voice for peace and if not now are doing this exact work and so like i don't know i mean i mean but it, it's frustrating up. The, yeah, I mean, yeah the jig, exactly about, that's what it the is, jig is up. like yeah. we can nuance this as much as possible but the jig is up yeah because i mean the issue is like i think at the core is that a lot of people were self-describing as zionist before it was known before people really knew what it entailed like what yep. you know zionism as rooted in israeli supremacist actually entails and now that it's been problematized and it's now being litigated openly they're having an instinctual reaction to that because they don't want to stop identifying with something that they now you know realize is discordant with their professed liberal values they just want people to go back to thinking that zionism is good but that's you know cats out of the back people know what it means now but but there are a lot of people that are making a brave choice to like reckon with that though brandon yeah like there are uh, yeah, people course, yeah. that are, are change that are saying you know i was wrong um even ta Tana, coates is an example <laughs> of somebody who's not a jewish person but who said i've reevaluated my view of israel as reparations for the holocaust based on what i've seen and so those are the kinds oh, sure. of people that i want to uplift but there are exactly, little babies no. little babies whiny whiny little babies out there who are upset that their self-conception of themselves as anti-racist, just reflexively, not based on work that they've done, but because uh, that is how they perceive themselves as, I don't know, voting for Democrats their whole life, or again, the historic trauma of the Holocaust. Unfortunately, we've seen this throughout history. Trauma inherently does not make you a person, doesn't automatically well, make you a person that makes you more equitable towards other people Tony, sometimes it goes in, in the opposite direction and sometimes it's about repressing others so you don't get a shortcut because of that experience you have to still be somebody that carries those values of anti-genocide and anti-racism into the present modern day and that includes incorporating anti-zionism and working to tear down the apartheid wall and racially integrate Palestinians into what Israel has what has become Israel. Unfortunately for liberal Zionists, they can't contend with the fact that domestically in the United States, they say they're anti-racist. They say they're all for multiculturalism. Why are you for multiculturalism? This is something I wish I could ask other folks like this. Do you know why? Because for me. I believe it's the safest way to construct a society. I believe that people living side by side one, alongside one another breaks down barriers. It allows us to understand one another. It creates an outcome that is more equitable and less racist in practice and makes sure that we move towards a society where people are not discriminated against, hopefully, ideally one day. If you believe that as a liberal and you're supposed to, then contend with the fact that you believe that a Jewish nation state is necessary, one that is made and uh, that is identified by someone's uh, religion. And that a wall needs to be constructed to p keep those brown hordes to maintain a demographic out, majority to maintain a demographic majority. They can't contend with that. And I'm sorry to, to talk over you, Brandon, but like I just know oh, th th that's the, th the jig is up, as you say, that you can't I, you can't reckon with that if you are a liberal Zionist.
I agree with your passion and I applaud you for having it. I was just, you know, I wasn't making excuses for anybody. I was just trying to explain, I think, behavior. I will say to your point, I know you weren't. Matt, I know you weren't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know Random point, was going to jump think, in to defend Israel right now. We missed yeah. him. Jump in to defend <laughs> Israel. Well, you know, at the risk of further, at the risk of further uh, t- making myself a target, to Matt's point, I think for historical trauma to have resonance and for it to, you know, be meaningful in some way, it has to be properly contextualized. And in a lot of ways, the way in which the West teaches the Holocaust has exceptionalized it. We talked about this at the beginning of the show. Outside of its genealogy with the other atrocities that were direct and indirect uh, inspirations for it. And a lot of people treat the Holocaust as though it happened outside of modernity. It is that there is no rooting in what the West claims its own ideals are. And that prevents people from understanding how to prevent it from happening again, or even to how to identify how it's happening again. Because in many ways, a lot of the pieces that led to the Holocaust within our like Western society are still there. And we just have never reckoned with that. Like the anti-blackness, the misogyny, the like, you know, the tendency towards ethno-nationalism. I think for a lot of Americans too, it's a little difficult because, you know, a lot of Americans would describe America as a Christian nation because they hear that all the time. And they don't understand that like Israel, when they say that they're a Jewish nation is a little different because they're like explicitly an ethno-nationalist project. It's not as though like, you know, America, it has a lot of Christo-fascist elements in it and the way that government like enacts laws and like chooses to legislate. But it's still a difference when, you know, it's actually legally set up that way. And I think a lot of people just don't fully understand that when they're just like reading what's on the tin. Because they go like, oh, yeah, there's a Jewish country and they're Muslim countries and they're right. Christian countries. It's like, no, there's a little bit of a difference there. No, to even jump off what you just brought up, Brendan, I, I, I think that's the thing, too. I don't I don't think that obviously those people exist. But in terms of like liberal Zionists that Emma was talking about, I'm not liberal Zionists. These are the people, right, right. But those these are the people to, to jump off what you said, then, like in terms of liberal Zionists, like these are the people who who realize that, like the whole Christian nation thing is bullshit and like Christo fascism and the sort of uh, 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 Christian right that uh, uh, is flourishing in this country. They know that that is bad and wrong, yet they support that very same thing, but for a different religion over in Israel. It's the same thing, a far right religious um fascistic uh, uh regime is in israel just like you view trump here if you're against that here you have to be against that over there it's the same thing well they don't yep. understand i don't think most people understand what fascism is and not just in the sort of minutia of like uh fascism but also what it looks like outside of its specific historical context in like 1930s and 1940s yep. nazi germany i think they have they would have trouble identifying fascism and neo-fascists understand that not just like you know the Likud party in israel but like actual on the ground like neo-fascists that we talk about every week on this show understand that like all they have have to do to get away with their fascism is not sig heil and the mm-hmm. fact that there are a lot of like neo-nazis out there who do sig heil just provides an extra layer of insulation for people who want to enact nazi policies but are smart enough to understand that nazism ethno-nationalism all of this stuff is not very popular there's a reason why people are pulling away from israel who other who used to support it and then why some people have to cloak themselves even further in that like you know uh plausible deniability because like ethno-nationalism fascism people know to like shy away from that stuff when they fully understand that's what they're seeing so that's why so much work has been done to i think hide what's going on in israel from like the majority of people even if we are inundated with it every day like it, because people would just instinctually recognize like donna hasty has been saying like once you see it you're like oh I, I get it this is bad this is jim crow this is like some like uh, someone walking down the street and seeing somebody of a different color or different race and like slapping Slapping the stuff out of their hands and calling them a slur. Like it's stuff that people instinctually know is wrong unless they self-identify as a fascist or as a racist. And some people are OK with it. And that yeah. is, is instructive as well once they see it. Um, but this is yeah, this was this was what I was referring to about this Noah Smith thing. He just they just learned that uh, interfaith marriage was illegal in Israel. WTF, this is insane. This is what we've been saying for and, years. And uh, somebody else says, uh, is this true? Uh, wow. What about interracial marriage? What about marriage between a straight trans girl and a man? Hmm. 
Is that a serious question or a sarcastic one? Because, yes, Israel does recognize gay marriages and other kinds of marriages if you are coming into the country because they want as many bodies to displace the Palestinians as possible. But if you are going to get married in Israel or want your marriage recognized, uh, it can't be done in Israel. Interfaith marriages are illegal in the most moral country in the world and in the, the liberal democracy that uh, is in the Middle East against, you know, fight and beating back these Arab hordes. All a lot less interesting to me than the fact that people uh, that still have keys to certain properties expelled in like a, a decades ago uh, aren't allowed back, but anybody with the right religion is able to just move on in. Uh, yeah. And actually those settlements, uh, taxpayer uh, are tax incentivized uh, through America. You get tax deductible uh, support Support for the Israeli project. Again, not anyone with the right religion. It's it's only some right. people, Ethnic some people. some Jewish people who mm -hmm. are allowed to move right in because we know that that it's another thing that they hide from Certain people. Certain pigmentation. The yeah, yep. it's an it's an ethno nationalist state in the like most literal sense of the word. Um, Mikey Love, this whole Israel fascism discussion is fire. Definitely needs to be clipped and shared. All three of you guys are nailing it with clarity. How about some all people four are of clip us? Uh, <laughs> all right, Dorsey, clip, clip away. I think we might get some positive clippers and some negative clippers on some of this stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I welcome it. I I've, propagate it. I've been missing the the taste of blood in my mouth. <laughs> all I've had are. Uh, what cough drops the honey flavor i'm sick of it i want mm. back in on the debate bro i like a, like a good cough right. drop sometimes i'll just have one as a treat like i don't even have a sore throat i'll just like, throw a ricola in my mouth i hope there's not a boycott against ricola i don't, I don't know no I, I, I'm boycott that i know of um but <laughs> this is not a, a real story person. there are some they've mm. come a long Lucky way in the cough, cough drop cough drop technology space like there's some really tasty ones that almost taste like candy uh we can get back to that another day but i'm, I'm a feet i like I like a like a lozenge you know i, a I get a little bit of a, that, that geneva switzerland boarding school cough drop all right i just saw the time let me read some ims and we won't talk about cough drops for another 10 minutes and then we'll get out of here <laughs> uh, uh free palestine surrounded by enemies like all the countries that shut down iran's missiles for them I mean, that's the other thing is like, say, Jordan, um, yeah. not that, with enemies like that. Yeah. No, it's it, that also that's another layer of propaganda. These are also autocratic leaders that are propped up by the West. Um, I mean, Egypt, like there are reason that people talk about how those governments are complicit in the genocide of Palestinians because they are in part because they like they're paid off by the imperial power that dominates the region. Understand our foreign policy for what it is, you children. Egypt is the number two recipient of American foreign aid. What do you know? We, the other side just, of the Gaza Strip, that's the number two recipient of our military aid. The other border country. What do you know? I was going to say something about mummies, but I thought that might be big enough. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're looking for all the secrets of the pyramids <laughs> people, people yeah. might take it wrong zionism ends here says it guts me to know that biden is a zionist but the only thing that gives me solace is the fact that the spineless morally bankrupt and propagandized generation like you are the most disengaged mentally deranged and politically powerless lot in this country well zionism ends here we'll ha we'll see about that we'll see about that we will win in the end but it just depends on how many palestinians uh are murdered in that time period. Uh, Chargund, a philo-Semitic uh, philo definition of anti-Semitism suggests it only hurts Jews and it's only bigoted or bad dehumanizing when it targets Jews is offensive for a number of reasons, one being that it otherizes Jews. Agreed. Um, Persona non Greta says, no way that's going to bite us in the ass if Trump loses by a hair. I'm not sure what you mean, what that was in reference to. Um, Milo the Dang Bilo, Elbow Room was a schoolhouse rock uh, song that did not hold up. Listen to Ween's cover of The Shot Heard Round the World if you want to tune with some real hair on its chest. Schoolhouse Rock did an Elbow Room? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, train Boy, Emma's very lucky she doesn't know what gooning is. I Moving on. Was that not when you put someone's backpack inverted? Yeah, let's call it that. Okay. Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. <laughs> I guess I don't know what it means either. But. <laughs> my friend, my friends, like freshman year, that was what it was called. I thought when the, they we they we was a prank when we would turn. 
each other's backpacks on the inside out. I'm afraid that this is something very dirty, and I just, yeah. I should just. Emma was up. definitely Gooning not at backpack. school, folks. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I went to an it's all girls school. Your kids. Like we were, that was our idea of really rebelling. Ugh, maybe we'll wear leggings and break the dress code today, and then turn each other's backpacks inside out. Um, okay, bonus hole says I'm starting <laughs> to get the impression that the Israeli government is disingenuous. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, bonus hole. Uh, what is the bonus hole even about? I remember that reference, but it's slipped my mind. What the original context it was a very that. offensive way that that was uh, that that got very some very it's anti-trans upset. stuff yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. about about their vagina being referred to as a bonus hole which to me i mean like that's a fun change up <laughs> uh i like a rhetorical flourish Clumsy i'll take poet. as many holes as i can get yeah okay. i, I want to be i want to be porous <laughs> the more holes the better <laughs> Don't clip it. Yeah, they will. Um, crypto plausible deniability prove number billions worth of jihadi NFTs weren't under the hospital. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so funny if that was it. The, yeah. uh, the Hezbollah has the uh, yeah, the, the, ape. Underneath the, <laughs> the jihadi ape. No, don't the give the video the 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 club. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them any All ideas right. for their like terrible like Israeli sketch comedy bits online. Those are always so like. Uh. All right, guys. Uh, three more. Uh, Mike from Mike from Bavaria. Speaking of gay and Tucker Carlson, I don't think Tim Walls ever endorsed tanning your ball sack. Not that that's anything. There's anything wrong with it. Well, I think there might be something wrong. With might it. maybe. Like, Increases I mean, probably your testosterone or something. I, that's, I feel like that's something that people talk about, like in the the health lo- the health sphere online. Like, yes. you gotta like yeah. tan your Tucker tan took your, that up. Tan well, your that's what's funny is all these guys are on like testosterone supplements. A hundred percent. It is very funny to see they them all, all get hair transplants and they're all on tea. <laughs> I have a. Oh, this is a story for another day. Meanwhile, my VO2, VO2 max is climbing the natural way. So, I mean, I <laughs> I'm, I'm so full of t- like testosterone naturally. They call me like T train at the gym. Sounds like, it sounds like everyone's stuttering. It's crazy. Wow. Real alpha male over here. Um, yes. Roxanne R- Rose X bar says, uh, I know the consensus is that Trump chose JD Vance for the VC class money, but did we ever consider that there was a way to save money? He could only pay the graphic designer to change two letters and one number on his campaign signs. Trump Dunst 2018 or 2028. Yeah, that's um, I think he is trying to hoard all the money for his lawyers. And the final I am of the day. Who is you says I'm somewhat amazed at the wholesale rejuvenation of Islamophobia in the U.S. after the October 7th after October 7th, where any Muslim is considered to be a terrorist or terrorist sympathizer due to their religion. When the last major terrorist attack that occurred on U.S. soil was the Boston Marathon bombing of 2013. Images of October 7th activated such a large portion of the population. I don't know how we respond and educate, diminish the bigotry that is so ingrained within our culture since 9 I would caution against saying the population. The population supports a ceasefire and stuff like that. The, the people who it really animated was the powerful people in media and politics who want to drop bombs and take land. Yeah, yeah. I think it really is just more about when you just look at the structure of modern day imperialism and colonialism right and and i think it you know like i remember the dismissiveness about oh we did iraq because of the oil and you know i think maybe i was a bit pollyannish about it but i think that this gen gen z right is it or is it hex i always or z, z. Uh, i'm millennial but you're z right bradley 96 you're on the cusp i mean that that generation i think now is fully anti-colonialists like they understand exactly what this is hey folks don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show we do it every day at 12 p.m eastern for about two and a half hours we even take phone calls you should check that out